Hello and welcome to the two-man power trip of wrestling. I am your host, JP at John Paz, and with me today is a former three-time WWE World Tag Team Champion, former FCW, excuse me, FCW Southern Heavyweight Champion, and of course, two-time FCW Tag Team Champion. You may know him as the Stampede Kid or Tyson Kid. He's of course TJ Wilson. TJ, welcome to the hey, two-man power. Thank you very much. I appreciate that introduction, man. Thank you. Good stuff, man. You are you've done quite a lot in your career. Great. Great, great wrestler. But what have you been up to? What's going on in your world? I uh, just, you know, been busy working now behind the scenes. Um, I have uh, my supplement company and just been working out a lot. And um, I, I have a, a ring in a warehouse about like 20 minutes from my house that I that I work out with people in, that I help train people. So I've been staying busy, very busy, especially as of late. I've been very, very busy, which is good, though. I'm definitely not complaining. Workhorse Fitness, right? What's going on with that? Keeping busy, uh, yeah, keeping the, yeah, the orders yeah. coming through? Yeah, and I thought, of course, I was like, I thought it would really slow down during this um, pandemic, but it, it did fairly well. It's It stayed pretty good. So um, I think all the home gyms, everybody uh, kept kept working out. But I, I was I was a little surprised, to be honest, but, it, but it's cool. Now, this warehouse, is this like an Undertaker thing where, you know, you get a warehouse built and you start wrestling in there? Or, or is this a WWE talk- property? Or is this yours? It's not, it's not me wrestling there, but I, but I, it is like kind of similar to that. And I, um, it's been me, um, training people, um, and having, having talent come through and, you know, either, you know, working on something or, you know, sharpening up or, you know, it, it, especially with this last year, it's been a good way to kind of, kind of keep ring shape without, you know, live events or working like a full-time schedule. So it's been, it's, I think it's helped out a lot of the talent. And I think uh, it's been fun. It's been really fun. And it's, it's good for me. It opens, it opens my mind a lot. So it helps me in that aspect. I think I saw Natty taking pictures there or somebody was taking pictures and I saw the workhorse behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's, it's a cool, it's a cool, it's fun. It's a fun, uh, Kind of a judgment-free zone. It's a fun place to be. Do you own it, or, or is it just like a warehouse you rent out? I just warehouse I'm leasing. So, as far as like you getting back, you're not wrestling at all, right? You're, you're... no, no. I won't wrestle again. I'll never wrestle again. Which is, you know, uh, it might sound a little bit, you know, very matter of fact, but but it is for me. It's been it's been my reality for <clears throat> almost six years now. So I'm, I've more than come to terms with it. When people hear me say that, I think they get a little like taken back because, but I don't know, but I just, I, I know myself. I know, I know myself very well. And I just know that I will, I'll never wrestle again. And I, and I'm totally fine with that. It's um, I, I'm proud of my career. I had a good, almost exactly 20 year in ring career. And um, my career is not over. It's just a different, and now I'm in a chapter two and I, I'm not in the ring anymore, but I get to, I get to do everything, but besides be the person in the ring, but I get to vicariously live through all the talent. So I, I almost get it. I get a lot of the fulfillment. I just don't have to take any of the, um, the, the physical, I don't get any of the physical, uh, side effects. So, so it's all good. You don't have to take the bumps and get the injuries, right? No, no more. Is that, you know, weird for you though, in a certain sense, I know you said you came to terms with it. Is that weird at all? It's like, man, I can't put not in there. Yeah. So like, obviously this is me talking to you now, you know, six years after the fact almost. So of course it was a giant, giant thing, especially for the first two years after my injury, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was also recovering. So it's like, you have so many things going on at one time. You go from being on the road, when I got hurt, I was on the road five days a week, and I'd come home. I'd fly home on Wednesday, get home like Wednesday, either like late, late morning or early afternoon, and fly out early Friday morning. I was home for like 18 hours a week. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, 36 hours a week, a day and a half or something. It was crazy. It was under 48 hours. I'm home every week. And then, um, and then at that time also, that day and a half that I'm home, we were also filming Total Divas. So... It was seven days a week. I was, I was, it was, a, it was a grind. It was awesome. But then, like, and then it came to a complete stop. It just like, a, it didn't, it didn't slow down. It didn't taper off. It was a, it just was a halt. And of course, it was a huge, huge, um, just a huge thing to deal with mentally, physically. Like I said, I was also recovering from the first off the injury. Then a few weeks later, I had the surgery, and so 
uh, you know, I'm dealing with all that at, all at one time. So it just takes, it's like, it takes extra long for every, like, if I was just dealing with like an injury, then like I could have healed quicker. If I was, if it was like, you know, some kind of something and I just wasn't a wrestler anymore, it's like, I could have maybe moved into the role of being a producer quicker. But since it's like both these things happening at the exact same time, it's, it's like, Oh, I can, my body can only try to heal so much at one time that it was, it just took a very, very long time to kind of, to feel like back to normal, honestly, it felt like it was a very long time. So when I say that I won't wrestle again now, I, I'm saying it from a very definite point of view, but I'm saying it from, I, I've already, I've already toyed with all of that in my, in my mind for six years. So I'm saying it from, I'm not saying it from where I, you know, from 2015, 2015, Right after that injury, I was I was determined that I was going to try to wrestle again. And then you just start to uh, get told some things, and you're like, "Well," and you experience you experience a little bit of um, paralysis. It changes everything. You you it changes everything in your life, and you realize a lot of things once you experience that. No matter if it's three seconds or uh, or a few days or whatever. I, I've talked to so many different people who have so many different different stories of like about uh, like a massage girl that i know uh, that works on me she she was temporarily paralyzed falling off a off a mountain so just things like that but it was like for a few days so like it put i was it put my like five or ten seconds to shame with those five or ten seconds time stands still so it just changes your perspective quite a bit i feel like yeah that's gotta be scary and uh, just crazy so what like it was just smoke joe muscle buster it was just today like you know complete accident he just hit it wrong i guess um I don't, I don't know i don't know if it was him or me um both i've seen a picture where um where i'm in it and i have my arms my hands are like underneath his arm pits like from underneath so i'm already pulling quite a bit on my neck i did it i don't think i have my hands in the right spot or i don't know it's 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 it was just one of those things that just like a crazy perfect storm of of, of stuff that happened and uh who knows um you know the it sucked up it sucked so bad that it happened um it sucked that it happened with joe because obviously i know there's no malice there we you know we've we're friends we've uh, we talked from that point on oh you know we always stayed in contact um then like post-surgery, uh, my surgeon came in and he was like, man, he's like, it's too bad about um, this injury. He's like, he's like, you're, he's like, you told me you've been wrestling for 20 years. And I said, yeah, uh, close. I said, you know, I started my very first match in July, 1995. And I got hurt June 1st, 2015. And he's like, he said, your spine's perfect. He's like, you have the spine of a, someone who's like, never, but like, just sat on your couch. He's like, ah, your spine's perfect. Minus that injury, your spine's perfect. So it wasn't, it just was a, crazy crazy freak thing it wasn't some wear and tear like my obviously now i have the the fusion but otherwise my spine's perfect i've never had a I've never had a back issue or anything like in, at any point in my wrestling career wow damn crazy i guess freak injury just uh crazy yeah. but you still look like you're in tremendous shape now yeah i mean so i i quickly realized in those two years well I say quickly two years i realized in those two years take the quickly out of it uh that uh it's 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 much harder it's much easier to keep up than it is to catch up so when i first got hurt um obviously i can't really work out as hard as i was prior to my injury and um i had a bunch of friends coming and visit me which was awesome uh but uh they come visit me and then it's like well the diet's out the window and it's pizza. It's like, well, I don't have to wear spandex, so no problem. So it's just junk food all the time. And it, you know, you, you can justify it. I, so I'm trying to justify it. And then, uh, then like, you know, everyone's lives move on and then, uh, no more, no more of like my friends coming and visiting, like they have to go back to work and do stuff. And now I'm at home. Uh, I finally get clear to this neck brace. So I'm able to, um, I'm able to lift a little bit heavier, but I still have to take it pretty easy. This is like th prob this is like September, October after my injury, and like I just remember looking in the mirror and being like, "Oh no, I'm I'm not in the shape that I was in, not even close." And I'm not, I was like, for me, I was like, "This is like not acceptable shape. I gotta 
I got to work on this. And it took me a, such a long time. Like, I guess I'd forgotten over the years, just kind of everything blends together and you just kind of like whatever your current, like whatever the finished product is, you just kind of feel like, Oh, I, this is just what I've always been, but it's not. And I, I forgot like how hard it was to like get to where I was and then to like now have to start back a little bit. So, I mean, I, I take my training very, very seriously now and I, I stay ahead of it and I'm not going to, I'm not gonna let it. Uh, I'm not gonna let let it pile up and and um, and ignore it. The fast food days are over. Yes, sir. They're gone. <laughs> so, in your current role, you know, I'm just a fan perspective, what I hear, it's like oh, T.J. Wilson is such a great producer. He produced it. He's doing such a great job with the women. Have you heard like all this positive feedback? Because I've heard nothing but like rave reviews of you as a producer and an agent. Oh, it's, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's so cool to see and to, to, uh, to, to hear people saying that it's, it's unbelievable. Um, cause I mean, there's not a, there's not a manual, there's not a manual for, for this. Um, for example, like to train, to be a wrestler, there's a, there's a lot of wrestling schools, obviously some are better than others. Some are awesome. Some are terrible. There's, there's everything out there, but there is a school. There are schools out there to learn how to be a wrestler. But then to be a producer is like, obviously you take what you learned as a wrestler is like a part of it. But then there's like so much more in terms of being able to communicate um, and convey your message and your idea and for people to understand it. And especially I'm in a little bit of a handicap, I feel like, because I have trained people before and, but this is when I was younger, but I could physically get in there with them. And it, it kind of made things a little bit easier for me. I, or it felt like it made things easier for me. I could physically show them or physically do it with them, but that's out the window now. I can't do that. All I can, all I can do to try to convey my message to you, I, I can walk through some things obviously, but I can't go full out. And, but I, uh, so it's really helped me it's made me work on my communication skills and being able to convey like what it is I'm saying. But I remember like when I, um, when I did take on the role of, of, of a producer, I didn't know, I didn't know if I'd be awful at it or like the worst of all time is honestly what I, I kind of came in thinking I was going to be the worst of all time. So uh, <laughs> I set the bar, I set my own bar really low. So at least I could hop over that one easy and kind of catch it up to things but i mean i'm going into a room with these guys that like these guys were all my producers when i was a talent and it's all guys that i respect the hell out of jamie noble like i have so much respect for jamie noble dean malenko fit finley arn anderson um i don't want to forget anybody mike rotundo michael hayes of course you know he uh learned so much from him i've I learned so much from all of these guys um adam pierce i'm trying to think uh I'm trying to think of who were his producers when I was a uh, talent. Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace. He, he had me a couple times. He and I have a very good relationship, but it's it's funny. It's not really talent and producer. We have some other. It's not it's not father son, but it might be some kind of uncle and maybe a uh, mischievous nephew or something. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> we we have some kind of other funny relationship. Me and Johnny, very very good one. But but yes, him too. He he did produce. Anyway, my point being, I, I came into this room and I, I know I, I know because I've worked with these guys how good they were. And um, I'd been away from wrestling for for two years, and I came at one point. I had actually stopped watching because um, just as tough to watch when I've been wrestling for twenty years. And then all of a sudden I can't do it anymore. And I feel like in that moment, it's been taken away from me. It's hard to watch, especially I can't, it's hard to watch full time. So uh, I obviously have like, I do have the 20 years I put in, but it's a little bit on the back burner. And now I'm coming into like, coming in as a producer and these guys have more years as a wrestler experience than I do. And however many years as being a producer, you know, I'm walking in, Dean Michael's already been a producer for 15 years and a wrestler for 30 something. I mean, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. So, I mean, I respect the hell out of those guys. And I took a lot of uh, what I learned from them. And uh, like I said, I just, I re I took what I thought was maybe going to be a little bit of a, of like me being able to me not being able to kind of show things physically. I thought was going to really hinder me, but it, I think me, working on my communication really helped and it's really opened up a lot for me. And, um, uh, I, I don't know. It's so hard to explain because I honestly don't know where 
where it came from or where it comes from. It just, um, but I just, I have a great relationship with, with all the talent across the board, men and women, but uh, obviously lately it's really been uh, with the women over like the last, for sure over the last year, like straight, like three, I've had like three men's matches maybe in like a year and a half or something crazy. So is that Vince making that decision? Like, hey, you're doing so good with the women, and we see the women starting to main event, see the women's really starting to step up. We like what you're doing with them. Is that Vince's call? Um, obviously, like I think everything that ever happens in WWE comes down to Vince's right. call. Um, so that's a part of it. Um, but I think I think it's just like uh, uh, it started with like I think uh, I you know they're just putting me in different things. That's what we kind of do. And you just kind of see like who kind of works with who. And um, I was shadowing a lot of people, like I was saying, Jamie Noble. I worked with, I worked with all the producers that I worked with as a talent. I worked with as a producer. I, like I remember like having matches where I'm kind of shadowing Dean Blanco or shadowing, um, working with Fit. And so of course I learned a lot with Fit. And I know how much Natty really loved working with Fit. And I, and I loved wrestling Fit you know, as, as men, and I'd watch also what he was doing with the women. And just in general, I was just, Finn is one of those guys that just commands respect everywhere he goes. So it just, uh, I just, I don't know, I took, like I said, I took these little things and just all of a sudden one day, you know, I worked with a, a, a women's match and then, and then maybe the next week. And then all of a sudden like that next week, uh, there was a there's another women's match and, and one of the girls was was requesting me to be the producer which i to me at that point i'd never heard of i as a town i never requested a specific producer like whoever was my assigned as my producer for whatever match like for example at one point mike rotundo was kind of like the tag team producer so he would have a lot of my tag matches but if i had a singles match it might be like ricky steamboat or something so um i so i, ne I but i never like requested a producer per se I've never been like hey like obviously I mean I just I have a great relationship with pretty much with most people I think in in that I work with but like if I were at that one point of as a talent I'd probably you know if I were to request I'd request like Jamie Noble we just have a good relationship like that and I uh, we have a similar wrestling sense I feel like and um but I, anyway I never I never request it never would cross my mind to to request somebody but one of the girls requested me and then and then another one. And then it just kind of like, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, it just snowballed. It completely snowballed. And now, now it's like an avalanche. And like, it's just, it's, it's, it's its own thing now for me in my, in my funny world, it's its own thing. It's like Bret Hart requesting Pat Patterson back in the day, or so you hear like, Oh, I want Pat to help me with this, man. It's kind of like the same thing. It's, it's a sign of respect really. Oh, a hundred percent. And, and I don't take it lightly. I take it very, very, very seriously. I don't, um, I know what trust, um, has been put into me and I don't, I'm not looking to, um, I'm not looking to fracture that at any, at any cost. So I know exactly, uh, I take it very, very seriously. And I'm very, I try to be very, very thorough with everything I do. I also do a show with Dr. Tom Pritchard, Natty's buddy. And he was saying he was the producer and he stunk. One of the greatest trainers ever, if, if not the best. Said he I stunk mean, yeah. as a, Hands down. The best. And he said he stunk as a producer. He said Ted DiBiase, you know, he loves Ted, but he said Ted kind of stunk at it for whatever reason. Obviously, Ted might be one of the greatest ever. Yeah, he yeah, said yeah. it's weird how some guys, he goes, they just gravitate and are great at it. Mm -hmm. it he's, yeah, he, he's right. I mean, he, I, I've seen it. I've seen it with um, coaching. And I, I think that I think there's a lot of similarities in coaching and being a producer. It's, I think it's I think it's very closely related um and i've seen i've seen some great 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 wrestlers but they almost can't explain to you what makes them great and and that's cool there's not there is nothing wrong with that that is cool but like um i mean i don't like for example like i don't know if i don't know if like ricky steamboat maybe he can i don't know if he can tell you exactly what made him like so cool and ricky steamboat and this crazy match with macho man and what made like you know what made me as a kid think man ricky steamboat's cool as hell blowing the fire and stuff like right. there's certain charisma or certain things you might do that you may not even they might be almost like just second nature to you and you might not really be able to always coach them i've seen great talent i've seen great talent not really be the best coaches and i and i have also seen people that weren't very good that didn't 
like that physically didn't get um, that side of, of, of wrestling. And there are so many sides to wrestling, but they did not, they couldn't physically, they were physically weren't a good wrestler and yet be awesome coaches. And I've seen that multiple times. So, I mean, there's, you're going to, you're going to kind of see everything. And just cause somebody's like somebody you watch on TV is either awesome. You feel they're awesome or they're not. That doesn't mean like, that doesn't mean it would, uh, it might, might, it might completely translate over and it might be, total 180 for both guys for example like it just it's so funny but dr tom is one of the best coaches if not the best coach the only other coach i mean yeah there, i don't there's it's dr tom he, we learned so much from him. i just listen to kurt hawkins talking about everything he does at his school is stuff he got from dr tom and fcw so i mean same as same as <laughs> same as myron it's all dr tom stuff so makes perfect sense that's why those wrestle pro boys are doing good. MJF and Mark Sterling, all that. That's because they're two or generation, whatever, split from a Dr. Tom school. Yeah, but but, but basically a Dr. Tom school, like in like in theory, if it was like uh, franchised out, yeah, that's what it would be a Dr. Tom school. It is great though, like as far as you being a producer and you've been able to connect and people wanting you to do the matches. So, what does like the producer do as far as like do they get the credit for the for the matches? Do they just have to put the matches together? Like, how how does that kind of work for the producer and the wrestler? Uh, depends. Was the match really good? <laughs> then, then, yeah. Then, then then the producer doesn't get the talent, the credit. But was mm. but was were you not happy with it? That, then I might I might get the credit. Uh no, I'm just messing around. Um, gotcha. So, uh, I'll, I go to the day. My day will start with a production meeting, and then uh, kind of figure out what we're doing on the show. And then from there, um, you know, I, I kind of I always say this: look at my marching orders, but it's not really marching orders. You, you know, we we kind of debate and throw ideas around. It's, it's all a creative process. We debate and throw ideas around. Then once I finally get like the finalized version of what we're going to do that night. I, I leave the meeting. Then I find the talent, which like I said, for the last like year, year and a half, it's just strictly been the women. Then we, then like, you know, we, then, then the, for me, the fun part begins where we, where we put this thing together and we, we paint this canvas with whatever we want, whatever we want to paint it with, you know, uh, it obviously whatever has been laid out that day, it's, it goes by those parameters, but, but the others, but then outside of that, and sometimes sometimes it's more uh, confined and constricted, and sometimes there's a lot more leeway. It, it just depends on the day. No two days are the same here in WWE. It's, a lot of days can be somewhat similar, but no two days are ever exactly the same ever. Um, and that's like when it's a lot of like the leeway is when I have, that's when I have my most fun. And I, I think the talent does too. And I, it's just fun to sit and create with people and try to, like I said, you're, you're, we're starting with a blank canvas. There's nothing on that canvas. There's, and then it's whatever ideas we come up with and decide to, to do. And it, it's truly art. We really are, 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 are we're, we're creating art. And it's cool for me to then, then like as the talent go out through the curtain and go to perform this, it's, it's so awesome to like, to watch that. But the, the, I, I take this back. So the best moment I said was the creating. That's the second best moment. Then the third best is them going out. And that's the third. Then the best best is when they know they've done a great job and they come to the back. That's that's number one by far. It's it's unbelievable. And um, when you have like it's uh, those moments don't happen. Those are like the big crazy ones don't happen every week. But when they happen, it's um you know you'll never forget them for the rest of your life. And like those moments at, uh, as the talent come through Gorilla that I've had are way bigger. Than anything I experienced in my own in ring career. Wow, yeah, it's unbelievable. We have, we have a great connection, and it's just it's just been it's been a blast. It, it honestly has. If it ends right now, and this is the peak of it, then then I've had a hell of a run in, in these four years, and, and I'll take it. I'll take it, and I'll, I'll run. And we recently saw Natty and and Tamina. They had the cameras back there. You know, they're crying as they come through the curtain, and obviously, you played a big part in. Not not them winning the tag titles, but you know, you played a big part yeah. in, in the match. Yeah. And and it was really cool to see them to see them come together and to see the timing was just hilarious. Like it was a, you know, like ten days shy of um Tamina like eleven year like uh anniversary of, or eleven years of 
being called up to the main roster. So it just was 10 days shy. And it ha it's in the exact same building where uh, the Hart Foundation won their first tag team titles against the British Bulldogs. Of like, so, just so much like generational stuff involved in this. And you have Naya is in the match too. She's in that Samoan. Like, so, I mean, there's so much generational stuff just in that one match. If you really break and in that building and it is, if you, it's crazy. It was, um, yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a, it was such a fun journey and it, and it's still going on, obviously, but just uh, just that first uh, ride, and then you know, uh, I think I think maybe people didn't, maybe they didn't want to believe it. The talent, maybe Natty and Tamina, but I think they, in the back of their minds, thought of WrestleMania and not winning on night two was maybe as high as it was going to get. And uh, but they were wrong. Ha, ah, so it's awesome. It was no, it's awesome. It was, I was glad. I was, I was really glad to see. It, it's like I said, uh, them winning it at that SmackDown. I told Natty this was kind of cool because obviously it would have been awesome in WrestleMania too, and that's fine. It didn't happen that day, but a few few weeks later on SmackDown, it kind of like they had the big pyro and they had like their own moment. It didn't get lost in the rest of the show, and. Um, like I said, and then it just happened to be in that exact same building, which is just so bizarre. Just like no, you. Like I mean, I guess you can, but nobody thought to to, to write that. It's just crazy. It's it's just weird, like weird, almost destiny and and life just doing its own thing. A little happenstance there. Yeah, that's interesting how that kind of worked out. Yeah, big time. So when you're like the you know producing the match and stuff, if they let's say do something in the ring like that you didn't want to do we're like oh that we didn't plan on you doing that or where did that come from do you say anything to them like does vince say anything like wh like what how does that kind of happen yeah i mean that, that happens sometimes sometimes um i mean this is it's, it's like for me it's almost it's hard to rate somebody somebody as a wrestler if they're not if they they don't have to be here but it, as they have to at least come through WWE at some point just because I've wrestled a lot of places and I know that like WWE is the only place I've ever been where you can be standing on the other side of the curtain, getting ready to go out and right before you go out in your three minute match, you just already lost two minutes or you got four minutes at it. And then your music hits. And now it's, now it's, which, you know, if you, if you're capable enough, that's fine. But now, now it's, now you're either adding or subtracting on the fly on improv and you know, you're walking out in front of, you know, however many people watching at home and how many people are in the arena. So it just, it's just crazy. So it's hard. Like there's so much, there, there's so much of that that happens, especially on live TV. There's so much of that that happens that if there's a, something that wasn't planned that, that happens, a move or something, it's usually not a big deal, especially, especially for the most part. Uh, like I said, I, I usually it would be done well. I, I really believe in, in the talent. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I would never be too worried about that. As far as you producing, did you think like you, you were going to become this like natural at it? Because like we were kind of saying before, it, it's one of those things you never know. So did you think like, oh, did, did, I'm going to get this? Or you're like, man, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this. So I guess like where I would have, like where the part of me would have kind of believed in myself is that, um, like I said, I did train people before. I trained kids when I was younger. Um, but again, it's I was physically able to, to demonstrate and show and, and do it with them where this is not that. Um, so like, no, I definitely didn't think I was going to be very good at this. I thought at best, at best I might be all right. I might, I might finally get the hang of it and be okay. And, um, you know, I, 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 I had everybody helping me. I had everybody helping me. I mean, everybody, Johnny, Jamie, Noble, Dean, or all the guys I named all like really went out of their way to help me out and kind of show me, kind of show me everything, like show me kind of like the way to do it, but then also show me like, Hey, but like, look, this is the way we kind of had to learn it. Like, look at all this stuff we kind of had to do wrong to figure out kind of where we are now. Things like that um, put a lot of things in perspective for me, but uh, honestly off the bat, no, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to be awful at this. I can clearly remember, um, my first phase in Sta at Staples Center in LA, and uh, I don't have I don't have a match. I, I don't have any like assignment. Uh, I'm just that's my first day. I'm in a production meeting, um, you know, and then I'm just 
I'm seeing people that I haven't seen. Some of them I haven't seen in two years. Some I've, I've never met before and some, you know, I've talked to regularly. So, I'm, you know, I'm having all types of different levels of conversation my first day. But I can clearly remember there's a, it's so funny. It's so funny that how this all ends up snowballing with like knowing the story now, like what I'm, where I'm at right now. But that first day it's a women's gauntlet match. And I think like Sasha and I are the last two, something like that. And Sasha asked me something like runs an idea by me and asked me if it makes sense. And the, the truth is I was so, like I said, away from wrestling for two years that it was, it almost <laughs> sounded like speaking alien to me. I almost didn't know what the hell she was saying to me. So I just said, yeah, yeah, it sounds good. I didn't even really know what I was kind of co-signing or I was like, Oh no, like this, I'm really, I honestly, so at first I really thought this was going to be really bad. I thought, I thought maybe I might end up um, almost being like an assistant coach or something, maybe at NXT at the PC, something. I, I, honestly, I thought I thought this was not going to go very well whatsoever. And you've settled in. You transitioned very well. Not that Sasha was never great. I mean, she's always been a good wrestler. But it feels like lately, since you're kind of working with that, the woman a lot and working with her a lot, really stepped up her game. Do you ever get like to yourself, like give yourself a little credit, like man, I'm you know these girls are really stepping up big time. I I, I try my, I try not to. I, I don't want to take credit for anyone else's work. I think I just think you know um, some people work well together, and I think sometimes I don't know if it's a, like I said like a, a a coach relationship or something. Um, the truth is, I <laughs> I try to get her to do like my, my matches like what I think I would almost do in this situation. And then and a lot of times she has like her own really crazy ideas that are like, I'll just, I, I'll just, all the girls, you know, all the girls, honestly, they'll come up with like, I'll, I'll kind of like, we'll be kind of, like I said, collaborating and I'll leave them and I'll come back. Like I'll go get some food or something. Cause we'll take a little break, come back. And all of a sudden they like, they have like all this wild stuff. Like I drove, I drove um, to Amway. Um, it was when it's it's a crazy day because we, like we, we knew it was going to be a big day for them emotion, but it's the day when um, when Bailey turns on Sasha, and uh, I mean you, you just never know what people's mindset is going to be like. How do they feel that day physically? Anyway, I just remember pulling up to the building, and um, I saw Naya, and she told me that she, uh, she wanted to take a power bomb off the ring apron, and I was like, "Wow, well, what?" The what? But then once, like then once she said that, it's like okay. Then like, uh, I, I have so much trust in the girls. Where I was like, well, where did where did you come up with this? Like what? Uh, anyway, and then it was awesome. I I love that match. I'm a big big fan of that um, tag match. One of the matches I've been very very proud of that I was a part of. But I don't. I never will take any credit for. I'll never take any credit for the talent's work. I think. Um, I think. I think. I think all wrestlers, I think um, the women just a little bit more than the guys, but I think all of us in general, we're all built, we're all built on confidence. And I think it's just a matter of keeping that confidence high and, and keeping, um, just keeping in that moment, keeping everybody on track. And I think so far, so far, so good. So great. To me as a fan, it's like you see the improvement of a Bailey, of a Sasha, not that they weren't good, but you just see the improvement. And then you always hear that you're working with them. You're, 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 oh, you're doing the, the Royal Rumble. You're, you know, you always hear that. So it's got to be your influence. It's, it's definitely helping them, whether it's like a Belichick Brady thing, you know what I mean? Or, or not, your influence is definitely helping them. There, there's, there's something. And, it, and, um, and I, I don't know, they buy, they vibe off of it. And so it, it's cool. It's, um, it's on, un, it's unexplainable. I don't know. I don't know how to, like I said, I, I so I've gotten better in my communication skills and explaining like, but this I, I don't know I can't I can't really put a word on on that I can't really describe it it's it's so I don't I don't know I don't know why um I I don't know I don't know why we've kind of figured out this this formula. Were you always a fan of women's wrestling, or is this something new and different for you? No, no, I, I, yeah, I've always been a fan. Um, uh, I had a big hand in training Natty and, and helping her out in wrestling. Uh, you know, both of us helping each other, but I, I trained Natty, especially up front. Um, and I always enjoyed like teaching her in a way that like 
at that time for, you know, 2001, 2002, I was trying to teach her more of like, at that point, more of like a men's style, but now that's just the style, which is awesome to me. That's what I love about it. And so I, I've evolved also as women's wrestling has evolved. And I've, I, I, I've always been a fan, but no, I'm not at the level that I'm at now. Now I'm, now I'm the biggest, a bigger fan of women's wrestling than the women, I think. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I mean, I, I really pay attention during the women's matches. Um, for Honestly, if it's on my TV, whatever company, I, I pay attention because I'm, I'm just curious to see what's, what, uh, what uh, all the other women are doing around the world. Now, you said before, Dr. Tom, the best trainer ever. I don't know. Uh, your family lineage technically might say it might be Stu Hart, right? Technically, yeah. you're the last graduate of the Hart Dungeon, right? So I guess I meant Dr. Tom is the best for what I would Current, yeah. Or, or coin as WWE style. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, Stu and Bruce Hart and Ross Hart, uh, you know, I'd be foolish if I don't mention them. They've trained me so much in so many hours in the dungeon or or if the weather was nice enough in that ring. That was the best time. When that ring would go up outside, you'd be like, oh, thank God. No more like bumping down here in the dungeon where like everything, you got to learn how to fall right because everything hurts down there. When you're 15, 16, everything really hurts. Like I recently just saw a picture of me, I think I might be 17 or 18 and it's with like, I sent it to my friends. I said, yo, look, look at the guys. I, I sent it to these kids that I train with now. I said, look at these guys I trained with. And it was like, not every guy was, but there were some big guys. I remember being, being thrown around by like 300 pound guys. And you're just thinking like, Okay, it's it's March. It's unfortunately it's, we're in Calgary, so there's still snow on the ground, but it's getting close. And soon we'll be able to set that ring up. And it's just the ring's just a, that much better than getting thrown around in the in the dungeon. Are you technically as a shoot the last graduate of the Heart Dungeon? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. I was I was there the day uh, I was there the day when we tore it down when we pulled the mat up, and I was absolutely shocked to see. Uh, <laughs> how thin the padding was number one like I, I well i say shock but kind of not really but what i was shocked is when we took pulled the padding off and you realized like it just was these little like wooden slabs like to elevate just barely above like this like uh cement or like linoleum like this super hard floor and it's just these little wooden slabs just like barely and then the padding and then the the classic green canvas over top. It was, it's so crazy to think like we were, I was wrestling on that thing like three times a week since I was like 16. Cause I actually had my first match then I started training in the dungeon. Like we, we were just kids messing around at first and then we kind of got invited to the dungeon and then it was on from 96 to 04. So eight years. Wow. Yeah. The main trainer was Brucey, Bruce Hart. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce and Ross both were like pretty, pretty equal pretty consistent there's pretty much the two of them every time um both both helped me on so many things uh ross 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 was the first guy to really help me understand the psychology of wrestling and i can remember it clearly i just asked him in the van if he were driving to some show in alberta and i just asked him like to the most basic way can you please just explain this to me and i might have been 17 or something and he was exp explaining it and explaining like that was maybe the first time, not just explaining it in broad strokes, but a little bit more detailed. And um, that really helped me out. Bruce was always very good for um, coming up with like exciting stuff. And like, uh, he was always big on trying to build, uh, build up character and build up. Uh, he, Bruce was pretty good at seeing both sides. He understood the um, technical aspect and he understood the entertainment aspect. And he usually was trying, you know, the best he could to kind of, uh combine the two you know and not, you know it's it was a different time but it, you know, i thought uh those, they they both helped me so much though really really did and then i had a japanese trainer that ross um hooked me up with tokyo joe and that i mean obviously i give dr tom a ton of credit but without tokyo joe like i i, I never even i never even sniffed there to be so um i owe everything to him tokyo joe Japanese Calgary connection, right? I mean, they always had those great Japanese guys came in and, and through that, that area. It's crazy. At one point in like the eighties, they had so many Japanese guys that they like, 
that they started like they used like one as like a Korean guy or a Mongolian or something. And they, they started using a couple as like Native American wrestlers at that point. Um, uh, like uh, one, one guy's name was Sonny Two Feathers. He's actually a Japanese wrestler. He wrestled in, he wrestled in New Japan. And I wrestled him. He's wrestling in Stampede Wrestling in the 80s as a Native American. And just, there were so many. But like, it's funny if you think about it now, just like, damn, there's a lot of crazy, awesome talent in Calgary. I mean, so much great talent has come through there. But but again, like just like those, like Liger was there, Kensuke, like a lot of awesome, Hirohase, a lot of great Japanese wrestlers, Mr. Hito, Train Brett and stuff. So, I mean, it just like, a, like you said, it's just this crazy connection that like went on even through me, like, then I started going to New Japan in 2002 because of Tokyo Joe. So like it was carrying, and then Harry went and um, Rick Victor. And uh, he's actually, he's from like a little outside of Calgary, but he's a apocalypse. Guy. Yeah, apocalypse. Yeah. Calgary guy. The world, the world hasn't been able to see how good he actually is. He's actually one of the, one of the best wrestlers that I've ever wrestled. Just always remember him early on, like thinking like, man, obviously he became, big in the, as the ascension but like i was like man this guy's gonna make it and then all of a sudden yeah you know they, i don't know they make him shave his head and, and his beard and you, you know all that stupid stuff that that happens to the guys along the way yeah 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 so who else was with you was teddy with you teddy hart when yeah, as far yeah as when you were back that's, to training? that's how i got that's how i got caught up in all this in the first place uh we went to school together um we were in fourth grade together and we, I like avoided them. We weren't really friends. We were in fifth grade together. And uh, same thing. I, I think we were a little bit similar, both real small, but I think both very mouthy, trying to kind of offset the size thing. But um, then, um, so I always kind of was thinking, oh, he's like the bad kid and try to avoid him. And um, he just, the way our fifth grade teacher had the class, like it just was, he just had a weird setup. He had, two desks beside each other facing two desks. It was all in blocks of four. And Teddy and I had a mutual friend or two mutual friends. In the end of the first day, I remember like Ted left and then I moved my desk a little bit. No, my friend's like, what are you doing? I was like, no, nah, I, I want to get away from him. I think he's, I think he's trouble. So I moved my desk. My friend moved his desk. Other friend moved his desk. The next morning, Teddy came in, saw like his desk a little bit off to the side. Then he's like, man, I, I think the janitor messed up and didn't push my desk back in. Then pushed his desk back into this little square. And I was like, well, I guess I can't get away from him. And I like, just gave in. And then uh, he kept inviting me to his, to his house and told me he lived in a gym. And when you're 10 years old, a gym isn't like a workout gym. A gym is like a gymnasium with like in Canada with floor hockey nets and basketball hoop. And so I remember any sold me on it because uh, he kept saying that um, he had an ice cream shop, which he did. It was a part of the gym. And um, so I come to his house. I went to his house and I realized it's this, this hardcore uh, weightlifting gym in Calgary that has like a ton of bikers. It's, it was wild. It was, it was funny. And it was in downtown Calgary. And um, good old BJ's gym is fun. I had so much fun there. Um, I ended up spending the next like, 25 years there like the in and out it's just funny and just so funny like where did that come from and I, I guess you guys probably lost connection today right i mean he's got his problems and issues i guess uh, you probably don't talk to him anymore uh, we, or maybe I, you still do i still talk to him we still talk you know um i hope that whatever it is uh you know i just hope he can get everything figured out um legally and otherwise i don't know i don't I, don't know, I just I would like to see him I'd like to see him uh enjoy and have like a, a relaxing you know second half of his life he was the youngest guy ever signed to WWE ever he's 18 or as soon as he turned 18 they signed him so it just yeah, shows you the I, potential I, yeah I saw him unbelievable potential I remember him um I went with Davey and Harry and Diana and Georgia to to England um, for that summer, like a little family vacation. They invited me to come with them, and Ted, Teddy was doing his tryout. I remember coming home because this is 1998. This is like you know, Davey had a cell phone, but it's like not like now. And so I'm like, we don't, I don't hear anything about this, and we're gone. We're, we were gone for like a month, so. Um, Finally, then I remember coming back to Calgary and like at like 
first question I'm asking is like, I remember uh, maybe it was Ted's parents pick us up from the airport actually when we land. And I was like, hey, did, what happened with Ted Trout? And then they're like, he got, he got a contract. And I was so excited for him. And then I remember running into him shortly after and he explained everything to me and said, you know, goes back to Dr. Tom was the, the guy there too. Yeah. It's crazy. And I remember uh, 2003, obviously he had his problems and ended up getting released out of his contract and maybe he was too immature and, and all this other stuff. But Bolo is a potential. But 2003, I was at a Ring of Honor show in Philly and you wrestling Teddy at the uh, Glory by Honor in the little crappy Murphy Rec Center. You're at that show? Yes. Great show. That is so funny, man. That is so funny. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. I remember uh, Teddy's dad asked, uh, Ring of Honor wanted to book Ted and then um, his dad wanted me to wrestle him or something. And then, um, so I, they, so I just got flown in to go wrestle Ted. Uh, I would, I just finished like my first three tours in of J new Japan in like the six months. I, and then I was going in, I just come home in June and then that's September. I was actually, I remember talking to Daniels and like, it was crazy. It, it ends up not happening, but at that point, we're like we're both supposed to start going back to New Japan a lot again. Like Daniels, I think was teaming with Brian, and he's he said that's was team with this other guy from Calgary named uh, Dave Swift, who's wrestling. He won tour in New Japan as a Swifter, and and then like I remember New Japan calling my coach and just saying like they're like okay, uh, next tour, and they'd always like put it out two tours, and then it'd be like no, no, the one after that, no, the one after that, and that went on for like a year, and then I was like, man, I get it if you're trying to figure me in i'm a, at that time i'm 23 years old that's cool but um man like just don't tell me yeah yeah you're gonna be like just don't string me let's just say hey we're not sure we don't maybe maybe in a year we don't know just at least it would it would have sucked but then it'd be at least ripping the bandit off instead of like prolonging it um but yeah i remember doing that roh show and i it's funny because i only did the one but i remember yeah. they, they had a big meeting and they were talking about how it was the last show at the murphy rec center so I like I I knew I knew it was la I knew I remember like someone asked me I forgot that it was Glory by Honor too and I was like ah uh, I don't remember the name of it but I know it was the last show at the Murphy Rec Center so I always knew that for whatever weird reason. It's crazy they had to pay off like the fire inspectors there was so many people in there and it got so damn hot it was just crazy so they had to go to the National Guard Armory the next time around and obviously that holds a couple thousand people so you don't have to worry about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hot. I remember it was so hot. I remember coming upstairs after and watching uh, the main event, uh, Samoa Joe, right? He's and Daniels. In the yeah, Chris yeah. Daniels. Yeah. And there's, I remember there's the thing where the ref ring, oh, where they, they bring the bell by accident. I don't know. But anyway, I just remember like standing up there watching through this curtain or something and just, or from the back or whatever, just being like, oh my God, it is so hot here. <laughs> I can't believe how hot it was. That place was, <laughs> it was a horrible place. But like, it, that's it's what such a cool atmosphere, though. It really yes, was. The fans were awesome. Unbelievable. It's one of those yeah. things, like, even the ECW arena, if, if it, like, people have not been there, it's like, it's not that great. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Just the... I went there uh, just to hang out. I think Hawkins was doing a show, and I just was hanging out with him in New York. And uh, I went, we went up, we went, he was, it was at the arena. And so that's the only time I've been there. I think there was a convention earlier in the day. I'd never been there before, so it was like um, it was it was cool to at least to at least step foot in it. I've never wrestled there, but it was very cool to, to experience it a little bit. They cleaned it up big time. You back in you know back in the day it was a mess, but they cleaned I it up. I did, man. <laughs> but as far as you getting signed to WWE, I mean, we mentioned Teddy. How did you get signed? I mean, they had to have their eye on you for a long time. Yeah, like I would like there would be funny little contact here and there but nothing ever really like I, remember, I, I mean i ended up getting signed in the in the fall of 06 but i remember one time harry texted me and was like hey uh wb wants to talk to you i think he, they they said they want to like offer you a developmental deal they can get you a developmental deal right now if you want to do it and i was like what are you gonna do and he's like well i, I want to still wrestle in japan a little bit more I said okay, and then I was like, well, maybe maybe I should go to developmental and tr and see see what kind of develops there, and then um, and then like never heard back. It was it was funny. So, um, but then we so it'd be like like you said like somewhat on the radar, but not oh not overly, and it would kind of drop off. Anyway, we uh, 
I'm trying to think. Oh, we went to uh, Hall of Fame with Brett, uh, WrestleMania 22 in Chicago. And that weekend, Harry got signed. And then Carl DeMarco was talking with myself and Natty was talking to me. Natty was actually recovering from, uh, she torn her knee in Japan prior, uh, in the fall prior to that. And uh, so Carl was talking to me about a possible tryout and he just, and I remember he, would, he was calling me and stuff after, like we, 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 had a, a, we had a good talk at WrestleMania that weekend in Chicago. And then he called me a few days after and was talking about, I uh, put together some highlights said they were good. He, he liked it. He just said that it's a bit of a hard sell because of my size. But he, he said, like, you want, he said, he asked me, like, can you stay busy this summer? I said, yeah, no problem. I can, I said, if you want, I can, eat, I can go to England right now. Probably I have a good relationship with Brian Dixon at that time. I could probably call him up and, and head over there. And he said, yeah, that'd be good. Like, it would look like I'm busy and it looks like I'm doing a lot of stuff. I said, yeah, I said, man, I'll go. I ended up being there for uh, nine weeks and there for 63 days. And we did 56 shows. We did so many shows. Oh. And that's what Brian Dixon does. He does a ton of shows. It's fun, but you're busy. So I was like, okay, you want me to be busy? Yeah, I can't be much more busy than going going there. So while I was over there, then Carl called me and told me that um, the trial was set for the first week of October. Um, and he just he told me uh, he had funny advice. He said, I, I talked to him uh, when I came home. I, I flew back home from England in September, and I'm home for three weeks, and I go do my trial. And when I talked to him, when I was home. He said, hey, make sure, it was very funny advice. He said, make sure that, uh, so you're not going to get any bigger, so just be as lean as you can, which is fine. He's like, um, be, as tan, be as tan as possible and uh, out-wrestle everyone. Okay, man. So I remember going and getting a spray tan for the first time, like, all right. And then uh, as, as far as the out-wrestle everyone, I, I tried to hold up that end. But I just remember that tryout. I went in a... Uh, um, on a mission just i knew you know maybe i would have ended up being wrong but i went in with the mindset that this was um but this was, that was my only tryout so in my mind it was my own my first and last tryout in my mind i i was 26 the thing the companies changed a lot but in 2006 when i was 26 years old it was almost reaching like the stages and you know 28 eh, a little old whatever 30 oh no so anyway uh, I remember going in like on a mission, like, all right, I have to, I have to kill this. I can't, I can't let this slip through my hands. And I, and I did my absolute best. And, um, Dave Taylor, I walked in on the first day and Dave Taylor, like I walked in so nervous. I didn't sleep the night before. I'm just, and Nat Natty's there too. I'm so scared. And I go walking in the first guy I see is Dave Taylor when I open the door and I wrestled with Dave in England and team with them. And, there were two days where he kind of like um, he kind of ran like like two little training sessions completely on the fly, and I took part in both of them, and uh, like and did a lot with him. And I, I really like Dave. He remind me his, uh, he has some he has some some similarities to uh, Davy Boy. Uh, something in their sense of humor, or something about about him kind of reminds me. Obviously, uh, more than just the English connection, but. Um, so as soon as I walked in, he's like, DJ. And then I was like, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't so scared anymore. I still was really nervous and I still obviously planned to do my best, but I, seeing Dave really helped me. Um, and he really looked out for me uh, during that tryout. I remember like we would do this little jogging around the building to warm up and, and Dave's practices were very different than Bill's practices at this time. Dave's were a lot more technical and a lot like doing drills. I uh, mean, Bills were more doing drills, a blow up drill. So we're doing this little jog to warm up. And Dave said, Hey, TJ, are you supposed to do the afternoon class as well? I said, I don't know. I said, Just the email they sent me, sent me here, told me to be here at 9 a.m. He said, He said, Hey, you should probably do the afternoon class because it'll, even if you're not scheduled for it, it'll look really good. It'll look like you did both classes every time. I said, No problem. I have no, like, I, I came there with, Carl's advice in mind. I, I was there to out wrestle everybody, not in a not in a greedy way, but those guys had jobs that I wanted one too. Um, and uh, remember, Dave goes and finds out, and he comes back. He said, "No, nah. he's like I talked to Bill. You don't have to. You don't have to come." So like he, same as like when I became a producer, and I said everybody looked at like Dave was really looking out for me, and I was so happy that like I, I'd been to England, 
the year prior and like spent some time with him. And uh, the first guy I did like a, uh, a drill with was uh, MVP, funny enough. And so it, it just was, a, it was a cool experience. Uh, but I remember Dave Taylor telling me at the end of the tryout, he said, Hey, um, I, Bill wrote a very, very good email. He's like, I've never seen him write such a, a nice email about somebody. So he's like, expect the call. But then like, I don't get one the next week or the next weekend, you know, uh, we, we all want everything now. So I was, I just remember thinking like, Oh my God, even I think I killed it as best as I could. in you know, in that moment and, and Dave told me Bill loved it and they're still going to pass Damn, That's what I thought. Yeah. And then, and then, um, Mike Bucci called me <laughs> literally the next day and, um, it was in, it was cool. It was very cool. I just couldn't believe. I couldn't believe it was real. I couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, I, I, it was unbelievable. Uh, but like I said, those four weeks waiting to be signed after Dave kind of telling me, like, hey, I'm pretty sure you're going to get signed. Um, those four weeks, t- time time really dragged on. But then... Uh, it felt like forever, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, it really did. Anytime I'd get, like, an unknown name call me, I was like, I think it's it. And then it'd be the opposite. It was absolutely not that. It was not <laughs> it was someone I didn't really want to talk to. So would they send you to Deep South or FCW? Uh, yeah, I ended up going to Deep South. And I'm there for like, uh, I'm finally there for like a month. And then the other really, really cool thing for me is uh, I wrestled Kofi in my tryout. Uh, October 5th. I don't want to mess this up, but uh, it's literally October 5th. To, oh yeah. I, the six confused me. October 5th, 1996. Uh, we wrestled a uh, WWE live event in Calgary. And then October 5th, 2006, I wrestled Kofi, my trout exactly 10 years later. Like a lot happened in that decade. I spent a lot of time wrestling and a lot of time um, working on my craft in, in that decade. And a decade's a long time. And just so funny to me that it happened to be exactly one decade later. And then, um, yeah, so that ended up going to Deep South. And uh, I'm there for about a month. But at this time, um, the change already happened in Dr. Tom's the trainer. And then um, I've actually, at this point, I, I, I teamed up with Dr. Tom once on an indie show in Washington State. So I, at least, at least the at least know like me coming in, I at least know the trainer. And then um, Tom was awesome from the from the beginning. And I've never had I've never even had like I've never had anything that you could even call somewhat of half of a negative ex- experience with Dr. Tom. So I mean, my time in developmental, I really loved it. Dr. Tom, Steve Kern, Norman, we because I'm there for a month and it shuts down. And we were just kind of we're all hanging out in McDonough, Georgia, for like a month. Then we get the news to uh, go down to Tampa. Yeah, it was weird, like, the way it just shut down, right? Just like, boom, Deep South is done. Dude, it was like, hey, guys, um, come back tonight at 6. There's a meeting. All right. And so this time I'm brand new. And the dress code's, like, so crazy. Like, you don't want to mess up. So, like, we're there and we're all coming to BizCash. <laughs> and then Johnny comes walking out. He's like, hey, guys, we're shutting this place down. And then he's like, all right, so let's let's get this taken down. And then, like, we all kind of sit there. Like, everybody's kind of like, what does that mean? I me mean, especially. I'm uh, like I said. I'm four weeks in. I don't know what's happening. And, and then it's just like, guys, I, I said, let's get this place taken down. And I'll never forget it. Hawkins and Ryder like stand up and rip down one of these giant banners that that was up on the wall. Like it's just a big poster. <laughs> and then it became like Lord of the Flies. It became Lord of the Flies after that. It was, and then it just was like. Not in, not demolishing everything, but I mean, then we took everything apart and got it out of there. It was so nuts. And I just remember being covered. The reason I mentioned this guy, I'm wearing these like uh, khakis. I just remember being like covered in dirt. We're taking down rings, man. I'm covered. I'm so, di- I had a white polo and a, these like beige khakis. I'm covered, so dirty. And then it's like, hey guys, um, l- l- we're all going to go eat now. And I was like, like this? I love to wear like shorts. Man, it was crazy. It was so crazy. It was fun. It was my time in the was fun. I mean, FCW, I had a blast. 
Norman Smiley, Dr. Tom again, Billy Kidman taught me so much. Steve Kern. Uh, I love my time in FCW. I, and I, and it's not one of those things that I loved it now when I look back in hindsight. I loved it in the moment. I, it was, I, I didn't go to college. I just wrestled. I just wrestled since, right before I started high school. I've just been wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. FCW was, I was there for like a little under two, about two years close. But I just, I don't know, I just look at it as though like, I was a little bit older, but I look at it as like my college. It just, I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot there and I learned... I, you know, that was where I first started working with Dusty and later on developed and we had, I worked a lot more closely with him, but it started there in FCW. Good stuff there. FCW, uh, kind of untapped as far as just obviously moved on to NXT, but just really, I know yeah. they had that small documentary on WB network, but there's so much more they could, because so many guys came out of there. Crazy. So many, so many I mean, Seamus, look at Drew, Drew, Drew's from FCW. And he's also an OVW. And I, I, like, I wrestled him. I knew him in England before. Oh, and he's 19 years old. And Seamus, too. I met both of them. Oh, Wade, too. All three of them. I remember. They are like, hey, what do you think Like, what do you think we have to do? I, I only kind of met Wade like my last day there before, my tri- like, before I left for my trip. But uh, I knew Seamus and Drew. I was with them a lot. And I was like, guys, like... All you have to do is just be seen. Look at like you're look at how tall you got. Like look how like look at what you guys look like. You got you guys are, and they're like I said, Drew's nineteen at that time. I'm like, dude, you're gonna be more than fine. Believe you guys are and they're and they're very talented on top of that. So it's so it's easy. I I knew like, okay, once you guys are seen, you'll be all right. And then I remember Seamus calling me. I was in McDonough, Georgia, and Seamus called me and told me he got offered a contract. I can remember clear as day Seamus calling me. So it's very funny. That's great, but when you get called up and you're going through FCW, is that like a, a Johnny Ace thing? You get called up and here's you the plan we have for you. Like, how does that whole thing like go for you? How does that come about? Um, so with me, so everyone has, I think, a little bit of a different story. So there's a lot of different ways you maybe find out or get told. Um, so Kidman came. Kidman at this point was working on the the road on the main roster, and then. On two, he's doing TVs and he's coming back down to FCW on on his other days when he's not on the road. I remember he came in the in the, the in the FCW and he said, "Hey, I think you're debuting next week." They mentioned in the meeting um, with Natty on ECW as your manager. I said, "Wow, okay." And then but I was very excited. Obviously, I said, "What? Well, like, what else?" I'm, I remember being like, "What else?" Did they say, "What else?" And he's like, well, "Nothing else." And now, now that I've been in these meetings, I understand it, but it's just so funny. I'm like, "No, no, they must have something else. One more, one more word." <laughs> anyway, uh, then um, then uh, right behind him was uh, Fit Finley and uh, Arn Anderson, and we had to do matches in the arena. I remember I wrestled, and literally the match ended. <laughs> I, re- I wrestled, uh, I wrestled, and the match ended. And the second it ended, um, they both like stood up and said they hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I was messing like, with you? Uh, no, they were serious. They didn't. Oh wow! Well. Match, and I just, I'm just laughing because like an hour prior, I'm getting told I'm getting called up. Now these two producers just told me that this match sucked, and I was like, huh? And I just was like, oh no! I remember thinking I'm not getting called up now. Like that's over. And then um, that night or that evening, um, one of the one of the female writers at that time for ECW called me and said, hey, hey so uh, we're going to bring you to the TV this week. And I just remember my head thinking, still, even after even after they hated my match today, like, damn, she doesn't know yet, is what I thought. But I was like, oh, okay. And then um, that remember I get to TV on uh, that Monday. We're in, um, uh, we're in Oakland. And uh, Arn Anderson calls me into the ring and uh, in the day, and he told me, he said, "Hey, I want to see you get some. I want to see you get some heat on a guy." He's like, "You know, you're not a big heel, so I want to see like how, how, like, what does your aggression look like? What do you show me? Like, make me believe." So okay. And uh, I actually I wrestled TJP that day, and and um, I, I knew him from before from MLW. We wrestled, and he was in New Japan. We we never wrestled each other there, and we never were on the same tour. But we just missed each other a bunch of times. But we knew each other, and we we wrestled each other, like I said, in MLW, and. Uh, I remember telling him like, "Hey, man, I'm sorry in advance. Like, I have to. It's going to be kind of stiff, but like, I just, I have to, 
undo something that he didn't enjoy on Wednesday. So anyway, we we had this we had this little match, and Ar- Ar- Arn loved it, and he was like, "Hey, okay." He's like, "Okay." He's like, "I can easily work with that." And then, and then a few weeks later, I wrestled Fit on my first um, my first loop of live events, and I was super nervous, and I and um, I, again, he was the second producer that that day that hated the match. I remember thinking like, "Oh no!" And then um, Fit came back, and he loved it. He, we we had we had such fun matches. And it was like it, so much of it would just be on the fly. It was so fun. It was I love wrestling fit. One of the best. One of the best wrestlers ever. He's so good, and just I don't know. Just his instincts are his instincts are second to none because we're not none of it's like really planned. So he's just going off instinct. This guy, he's unbelievable. Definitely one of the one of the best. One of the greats. Definitely Terry Funk always says one of the best wrestlers ever. Fit Finley. Really? So that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's, I mean he's he's right, but that's so funny. As far as like putting the hard dynasty together, are you excited for that? Because obviously Harry's got to be your buddy, you know, and not Italian, obviously. Yeah, and my very first ever match is I'm a team with Harry against Teddy and his brother. Um, so like now it's come full circle where now we're attacking, team, but it's 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 on SmackDown, it's on ECW. It, it, you know, eventually we're on Raw, we win the tag titles on Raw. We're on pay-per-views together. Like, it's just crazy. It's, you can't, if you told me, if you told me that after my first match, I would never have believed you. Like, there's no way. And just, and then, you know what? Maybe maybe I was so naive when I was 15, I might have believed you. But if you told me that when I was 20, I wouldn't have believed you. I would be like, no, I've seen a little bit now of this. this, I understand it doesn't, I would prefer, it is a little story that I could write out like that. And me and, TJ Wilson and Harry Smith go on to WWE and win the tag team titles managed by Maddie. Yeah, that'd be perfect, but it's not going to happen that way. But then it did happen that way. So it's, right. it's very funny. It's like you, I don't know, If you told 20-year-old me, 15-year-old me might have believed that, but 20, no way. So it just, is, it just is funny that it does end up happening. It's crazy. It just, I don't know, there's so much weird stuff that feels almost unexplainable sometimes. It just, a lot of things almost just happen. I don't know. Obviously, it doesn't, and it's it's all about like that preparation, meeting hard work, meeting the just the proper time. But it just happens. It seems a lot. With that, you know, as a fan, you're always like, "Man, that's awesome! You win the tag titles." Does that mean a lot to you guys? Like tag team champions, they're doing something with us. We're getting a push. Does that mean a lot to you? Huge. It means so much to me. It means, and it should mean something to everyone. But it means that the company is saying hey like these guys are valuable there, there's some either either these guys are valuable and we want them to, to be represented as such or we see a lot in them and we want you to also see that we see a lot in them and this may help you or you know whatever the mindset is i never sat and actually discussed what the mindset but definitely it's i mean it's definitely a compliment it's someone saying hey like like okay you didn't actually pin the person and win this but you did you did earn it you, you didn't, act, I didn't earn it. I didn't earn it when I actually put Miz in a sharpshooter and he tapped out, but I did earn earn it by by my work and the, the body of work and the work that we'd put in at that point. Some Somebody felt that we'd earned it. And so I did, I did earn that title. I didn't, I didn't earn it by actually making the Miz tap out, but, but we did earn, we did earn those tag titles for sure. And it, it means a lot. It, and it, it kind of, to me, it kind of gives like a little, at least maybe to like the like the 10 year old me like if i'm 10 year old me arguing wrestling uh once i really get engulfed by wrestling and it takes over by the time i'm like 12 13 at least like always you know at least i could say oh at least this guy has been a champion before or whatever so like it kind of gives you like at least it gives you like a little place in history like now in this title history you're there forever so it definitely means a lot when you guys are the champs, do you expect a long run or not really? You, you, you just don't really know. Yeah, you don't really know. And I, and I say this to talent a lot. Uh, um, when, when we won them, I always go in with the – I try to go in with the mindset of like, okay, just enjoy this moment, the moment of winning them. Just enjoy that. It's always, it's always a cool moment. And just know that like, hey, even if the plan maybe is to have this for – like two years, that might change and you might be losing it the next night. So like, I always try to like, especially when we, I win it uh, later, when I win the tag titles with Cesaro, I went in with the mindset of, 
I thought we were losing right away the next night, right back to this is what I thought. And nobody told me that. And I just thought, I just thought that, or I was, or then I was like, will, and I was totally cool with it because the Usos, they're awesome. And I, I've always been a huge fan. I mean, what, whatever, when we end up losing a new day, I'm totally cool with that too. So uh, I went in with the mindset, especially that second time, the time with Cesaro was like, okay, if we lose this the very next day, it's totally fine. Cause it's already, it's happened now. So it's like, like I said, that little record book, whatever it is, like it's in there, it's good. It's a little validation that it was five years later for me, felt like some validation. So now it's in there forever. If we lose these tomorrow, I'm fine. I'm cool. And you and Cesaro, another great team. And obviously you and him beat the Usos. You guys won the tag titles and won it twice, really. But you yeah. guys, another team is like, oh, where are these two guys coming from? They're from two different worlds. And then boom, yeah. awesome team with great chemistry. Thrown together. It was weird. I mean, uh, we wrestled a few times and we had good, great chemistry as opponents, but that doesn't mean you're going to have great chemistry as a tag team. It doesn't mean that being a tag team makes any sense. Even if you might have good chemistry as a team, if it doesn't really make any sense, like that doesn't mean the, like, the fans may not care. It, I mean, and just like you said, like we're, we're both non-Americans from to totally different parts of the world. Um, but, uh, you know, the fans, I think, felt that for sure was Cesaro, like he was underutilized. Um, I was at least coming off that little, that last little, uh, not last, but I was coming off that NXT stuff, which not everyone had seen, but uh, some eyeballs had seen, some people had seen it. And I was getting a little traction with that, um, with the two takeover matches. And then, uh, and then, then I was paired with Cesaro just randomly, but we had a triple threat match with Dolph in Liverpool that I always kind of look back to and wonder like, did that spark something in somebody's mind? Cause we, we did like in that triple throw, we did a couple like inverted, like tag moves, like not on purpose or whatever. Yeah. And so I don't know, like, was that part of it? I don't know. But I just know that I saw a graphic on Sunday night or Monday morning on Twitter. It was a tag team gauntlet match. And it was all of a sudden I saw like myself and Cesaro beside each other. And I knew we were in a tag team the night before. Uh, so I was like, I, so we're beside each other. So I, I'm assuming we're, we're the team here. Uh, okay. And I remember we didn't talk, we didn't talk a lot about like little spots and stuff that day. We just kind of like worked. It was fun. And we just had like, uh, like an instant chemistry. And I think then the next day we we're also a team and we wrestled new day. And then the next week, like we wrestle, um, the Matadors on, on superstars in Detroit. I remember we come out and Detroit is a pretty smart wrestling city. And uh, we come out to Cesaro's music. When Cesaro came out, it was still like a pretty insane reaction that for, for me, I was like, Oh man. I was like, can I tag with this guy for the rest of my career? This is going to be easy. It's going to be so yeah. easy for me. It was so easy for me. He, um, he, he, he's definitely the quarterback. A lot of the times putting a lot of things together. I'm that way too, but I have no problem uh, letting that, uh, someone else take charge. So, like, he was like the perfect tag partner for me at that at that point in my career. Uh, myself and Harry, it was very cool because we're both coming up at, like together and kind of experiencing WWE together and experiencing success in WWE together. Like we, Harry and I also have like a. We're very proud of it. Was a, it was a live event. It was the day after Christmas, but we had a singles match at MSG. I remember Johnny and Vince both um, had a lot of praise for. I was very proud of that because, uh, first off, I knew what kind of matches I've had with Harry throughout these like towns in Alberta that I want to show that to these cities and this to this wrestling world. And um, and you know, Owen and Brett wrestled each other at MSG, and and I know like Brett wrestled Jim there, and and you know, there's all these cool Hart family things and. And we've teamed with Brett. We've teamed with Brett at MSG. We did a six-man tag, and then to, and then to wrestle each other in a singles match. Like it just it felt cool to have like a proper singles match at MSG. It was just it's the world's most famous arena, and to be able to say that you wrestled the guy that you started your career with in your very first match as your tag team partner. Yeah, that's cool. it. Just, it's just it's just awesome. I, I I like I I wouldn't trade that for anything. That's awesome. And not to just talk about me, but for a second, I was at that six man and I was at WrestleMania 10. So I'm at all these shows that, that you're hilarious. on. Yeah. <laughs> crazy, crazy the way it worked out. The six man was so funny because, like, uh, there was, I think, a tour in like Europe going on. So some of the Nexus guys were there and they sent the three to the MSG show. 
Uh, but then, but then it's like me. So Nexus at that time is like outnumbering everybody, but it's like, it's three guys. It's Tarver, uh, I believe Otunga and Heath. If I remember correctly. Yeah. And then, and then it's me, Natty, Harry, but also Brett, but also Jerry Lawler. Maybe so I was like, yo, there's like six of this five on three out here. Like the Nexus, it just was. Like that was, I remember saying that to Harry when we we're out there, just like laughing to myself. That was a good night, though, especially for uh, for Brett. Obviously, a big appreciation, a big tribute to Brett. Damn, he did the elbow up the second that night. Yep, Brett did, Brett did the elbow up. The, I remember. I don't remember if he planted or not. I honestly don't remember if he planted or not. I remember like selling on the floor after tagging Brett. I remember looking up and I see him like hop and sit on the top rope, and I was like. He's really going to do this elbow right now. <laughs> oh, man. And it was awesome. It was so awesome. It just, like, it was so cool to be there, to be in that match. It was it was so cool. Um, I have nothing but, but fond memories. We teamed with Brett a little bit in um, Germany, too. That's why sometimes you get confused of who the maybe the six guys, who the three Nexus guys were, because we, we did a tour in Germany where we wrestled against Nexus for a whole second half of the tour. So and it was. Oh, I didn't realize that. Awesome. Sick man, sick man tag with Brett. So it's funny. Like I got to do some. Like I said, some some really cool stuff in my career. Like team with Brett, wrestle Harry MSG. Um, we wrestled DX. We um, clothesline Vince WrestleMania. Like just some awesome, awesome stuff that like ten year old me is losing his mind over. No doubt. Every day he's going crazy over. Now, as we hit the wind down, head towards the finish, I want to mention this to not just kind of brush over the NXT run. I love yeah. when you were a heel in NXT. That was great. Feud with Neville was great. Feud with Sami Zayn was great. Love the Neville stuff. I love your little catchphrase, you being the sarcastic, you know, a-hole and stuff. And it, it, you had a great run in NXT, not to kind of just overshadow that, but it, that was awesome. No, no, and I really appreciate that. And I was uh, channeling my uh, my inner Ted, my inner Ted for, uh, for that run. Nice. And uh, – uh, and that and Natty was, uh, she's my wife at that time as well. But um, she's she's kind of playing the role of uh, Ted's mom a little bit, of like make like I come in like the Tasmanian devil and cause all this stuff, and then she's like, no, no, he's okay, he's just having a bad day or whatever, right. and trying to you know embarrass, but trying to make make excuses for my behavior. So it, it was so fun. That stuff was so fun. And using her as like the pawn in my matches was so fun and cool to again that creative process and and again being involved with like women's stuff like there's a little period there's a little period right after um, I do the NXT stuff and before I team with Cesaro where I'm kind of managing Natty a little bit and I'm in these like like I'm out there for like Natty it's so weird the when I first come back to Raw it's it's I believe it's Layla versus uh, Rosa Mendez. And Natty's managing Rosa, and I'm also out there like managing Natty, who's managing. It's it's real crazy. And I remember, so I pulled up the four. I came out. That's the first time I come out on Raw with the headphones. But I came out the headphones and and my phone, and I was like, I don't want to get in trouble if they see me watching YouTube or something. Like, so I was like, okay, what I'm gonna do is this. So I sat on. No one told me this, but I go sit on the steps and I watch. I'm watching the Fatal Four Way match on my phone on the network. So I knew, like, a worst case, you can't. I can't get in too much trouble because at least I'm watching the network. So, uh, right, yeah, but yeah, like that. So my point of so then I was in this weird like girl world. I kept saying like, like uh, I remember like pulling somebody's foot off or like when Natty knocked Nikki Bella and I catch her or like I, I manage all the. I managed that it was the total divas versus the divas at Spyro series. Like, and I'm out there. It's, it was just weird. Cool. Like again, but back to the point of like, yeah, I've always kind of had this weird, I didn't even realize maybe, but this weird connection to, to women's wrestling. I don't know. Because, I mean, I, Nat, Natty's obviously did so much of them, but like same with like the Bellas and stuff like Natty really trained them. And so it just, it's just very interesting how it all kind of ties in together. You had a great, uh, 20 year career obviously now great run as a producer but looking back you know if somebody let's say wants to go on youtube or maybe wb network on peacock so i'm like all right i want to put in some tyson kid i want to put in some tj Wilson. who's some yeah. of your uh, just your favorite or your best matches or just your, you know maybe best memories 
And I meant to mention him when I just uh, said like that we wrestled DX and Clothesline Vince, but also uh, <clears throat> I have two two matches. One, one is one is a longer one on uh, Superstars, uh, but two matches with Rey Mysterio, which like mean the world to me, especially that second one. Um, it's on YouTube somewhere. I mean, at one point, some there was some guy on there that had like 12 million views, but that guy got taken down not too long. I looked it up recently and it wasn't there. The match is there, but that guy's crazy number one wasn't there. Um, but yeah, like against Ray or against, uh, like you mentioned, Neville or Sammy, uh, that, that fatal four way, I'm very proud of it. Um, myself, Cesaro and, uh, Dolph triple threat from SmackDown in Liverpool. I love that match. Um, the stuff with Cesaro against New Day, the stuff with the Usos with, with Cesaro and with Harry. We had, we had a, we had, um, we had a, re so we had a pay-per-view, we had a match on pay-per-view at Money in the Bank. Um, myself and her against the Usos, but we, it was like not very long. I think we had like five or six minutes, maybe. We wrestled the next night on, on well, not on Raw, but at Raw, we wrestled on Superstars, but we had like, we had like 15 minutes. Um, I remember Brett and Pat Patterson coming and finding us after, because I think that's the day they're setting up the SummerSlam stuff with the, the Nexus. So Brett's there that day and it's uh, Brett, Brett and Pat came and found us I remember, you know, we all, we all have the same mindset, all four of us, all six, Natty and Tamina, too. It was funny that now they're the tag, women's tag team champions. But also because the six of us had the same thought process. We wanted to we wanted to show them the match that they missed out on from the pay-per-view the night before if we'd had 15 minutes instead of six minutes. And I don't think that's a bad attitude to have. We didn't do it in a negative way. We did it, I believe, in a positive way. And I remember Brett and Pat coming up to us and just like really with a lot of praise and like they love that match. It's on Superstars with the Usos, I think maybe like June, June or July, um, 2010. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Trent Beretta, another one of my favorite opponents, had so many. Kurt Hawkins and I had one, like one real, real, real good match on NXT. It was very good. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I've. Uh, sometimes I, I come across like random matches that either I don't remember as much or I, you know, the match where her and I win the tag titles is a lot of fun. The crowd's like really hot and Big Show and Miz did a hell of a job for us. And that whole like finishing sequence, uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud of. And I, a lot of it's Miz's, Miz's call, but it was, it was some great stuff. I feel like that it's still holds up. As far as yourself and workhorse fitness and everything, where can everybody get it, reach it, you know, and, and just give us all the information on that just to get the plugs out there. Yeah. So um, on Instagram, it's at Workhorse Fitness Products. Um, the website is workhorsefitness.com. Um, and, you know, I have a, that's mostly pre workout, uh, BCAAs, fat burner, protein, um, and um, apparel, you know, clothing. We're, we're always working on stuff, but a lot of our stuff at one point, um, like a lot of our clothing stuff was like coming from New York. So like during this pandemic, like a lot of it was so hard to get certain things and it, I get it. It's totally, it's totally fine. But uh, so yeah, it's just been, it's cool. It's, it's just been growing and we've just been, um, it's just a learning process and kind of figuring out day by day uh, and just, and then uh, my Instagram is at TJ Wilson, seven eleven, and my Twitter is at TJ Wilson. I had to add the seven eleven cause I couldn't get TJ Wilson on Instagram, but uh 7-Eleven is my birthday. So it just happens that it's a pretty easy number. People know. So. I thought you were going to say you love those 7-Eleven hot dogs. I, was As, I mean, there, <laughs> there's a period of time as a kid that those that going, going to 7-Eleven at lunch and getting a big bite was definitely the thing to do. So, yes. So what's next for you? What, what you getting on the road again? Is uh, WB's getting on the road again? Yeah, 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 I'm getting ready to head back on the road. Uh, in July, I think everybody's pretty excited about it. Uh, I've not been on a plane in over a year, which is <laughs> bizarre coming from from my world. But um, I, think, I think we're all looking forward to it. I think everybody's excited. I think the fans are excited. I think we're excited to have the fans back. It's gonna be it's gonna be cool, and it's just gonna it's gonna be it's just gonna be fun to see. But it's like this I, I feel like this time that we've had this last year like is a time that i'll never forget it was like some of the most special time and we'll see what like the future brings but like we're like it's like we almost forget that um for like how crazy 
uh, in WWE, how crazy our lives were before this pandemic. Like now we're, we've just been in Florida for a year. And from my house, like before the tapings were 90 minutes, then it moved to another place that was 90 minutes and moved to another place that was an hour. Now I moved to a place that's 30 minutes from my house. So like we're about to get, and I know it's, I know I'm not, I know other people are flying in weekly, but we're about to go onto that, that crazy, uh, where like you're in different time zones for production meetings and raw locally, like, Raw locally or SmackDown locally will start, you know, when we're on the West Coast, it's five o'clock. For the last year straight, it's it's all been, we're in Eastern time zone this whole time. It's all been eight o'clock. We're about to move. It's One day it's going to be five. One day it's going to be eight. And we have to, like, we were at, like, such, we had it down to such a system. We almost have to, every. I feel like everyone has to almost be reminded of these types of things going forward. Crazy. But we're excited. Crazy. Everyone's excited for sure. So there's yeah, that. It's awesome to get back out there, get back on the road finally. Yeah, yeah, and just, man, I, I can only imagine, I know we saw it at WrestleMania, and you see it, I, I'm a big NBA fan, I see it watching the playoffs or watching UFC, you just see the fans, those sold out fans, those arenas have the sold out fans going crazy, they're so excited to be back, so it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a mutual partnership. Yeah, it's awesome to finally get the fans back yeah, and uh, get things rolling again, but uh, TJ, thank you so much for all the no time problem. tonight, really no, appreciate man. it. My pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was a fun chat. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Appreciate it.